Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 91. It's on the conservation of electric charge, and this is among objects inside a system. And we're going to start with a simulation. This is from simbucket.com, a group of physics teachers in Illinois. And what I'm going to do is take a balloon, I'm going to rub it on a sweater, and what it's going to do is it's going to pick up the electrons. It's going to pick up a negative charge. Now, if I hold that next to a conductor, like a bucket, it will be drawn to it. And the reason why is that it's pushing those negative charges away which can move in a conductor and so it's drawn towards the positive charge. If we look at an insulator those electrons can't move throughout the material but they can move on either side of the proton and so then we can get that positive charge and that attraction. I can even touch it and through conduction we can transfer some of those charges to the object as well but the number of charges that we have in this whole system is going to be conserved. It's going to remain the same over time and so the conservation of charge in a system means that if we have a couple of objects, one let's say is neutral and the other one is charged, if I bring that charged object next to the neutral object, I can induce a charge in it, but we're not bringing in new charges, we're not losing charges, the amount of charges in the system is going to remain the same. Even if I touch that other object and there's conduction, so the movement of charges, the total amount of charges in that system is going to remain the same. And so how can I ever lose those charges? Well, a really easy way to do that is through grounding. If I conduct a those charges away to something like the earth then we can actually change the amount of charges inside the system. And so an example of this if we take some amber and we rub it on some wool what we're really doing is we're transferring charge from the wool to the amber. So if I hold it above a feather like this the feather is attracted. And so now let's look at the conservation of charge in these objects. This is what all the objects look like before and I made it as simple as I can. So they both have a net charge of zero, all of them have a net charge of zero. In other words, the positive and negative char charges are going to be exactly the same. But when we rub that amber on that wool, what we're doing is we're transferring some of those electrons to it. And so if we were to look at now this wool here, it has a plus three charge and this is going to be a minus three charge. We've transferred those electrons to the amber. What happened to the total number of charges before and after? They're exactly the same. We've just moved where they are. And so when you hold that amber above the feather, what it's doing is it's inducing charge inside the feather and so we get a positive charge on one side and that's why it's attracted to the amber. So we could see the same things through conduction. So let me charge up that amber again and I'm going to use a pith ball. So the pith ball, same thing as the feather, it's going to be attracted to it but it'll quickly be repelled. Why is that? There's conduction. We're actually transferring some of that charge from the amber to the pith ball. Now they both have a similar charge and we get that repulsion. So let's look at the conservation of charge here. So they all had a net charge of zero to begin with. We transferred some of those electrons to the amber, but we then transferred some of those electrons to the pith ball. And so at the end, this has a negative charge, this has a negative charge, and so we have a repulsion between the two. What happened to the total number of charges that we have? It's conserved before and after within the system. Now how can we get rid of some of that charge? You can see that we have an excess amount of negative charge. If we're to connect a wire to it and connect that to the earth, then we're going to have movement of those electrons to an area where there are less electrons. And so what we're going to be left with is a net charge of zero in the object again. If we want to add charge to it, we're going to have to charge it up again. And so now let's kind of apply that using another simulation. What we've got here is an aluminum can. And then I can charge up a glass rod, which has a positive charge, or a rubber rod, which is going to have a negative charge. So if we have the glass rod that has a positive charge, note that wherever I move it, that aluminum can is drawn towards towards it. So these are my two objects in this system. Now let's add a rubber rod that has a negative charge. Wherever it is, the aluminum can is going to be drawn towards it. So if I put it on the left side, it's going to be drawn to it as well. And so you can't see the charges. And so before I click the button and we move forward and I show you the charges, you should be thinking where are those charges in the two objects and how are they moving so that we get this attraction. And so it takes a while to think about it. Remember that can is a conductor, so the electrons can move within it. And so let's start by showing the charges in the glass rod. Glass rod is going to have a positive charge, and so watch what happens. The electrons are drawn towards that positive charge. You get a buildup or induction on one side of that, so we have a negative charge. And so there's an attraction between the glass and the can itself. 
The can is neutral, remember, but we're inducing a charge inside it. Now what would it look like if we look at the rubber rod? The rubber rod, remember, is going to have a negative charge. And so what is it going to do to the electrons? It's going to repel them. So it's pushing them away. Now we're left with the protons, the positive charge. And that's where that attraction is coming from. We're getting that pull towards that rubber rod. It doesn't matter what the charged object is. We still have an attraction. And we still have a conservation of those charges. It's just that they're moving in different places within the objects. So did you learn to predict where the charges go before and after charging in a system? Remember, the net total of charges before and after is the same. They just might be in different places. Did you learn to designed to collect data to figure out qualitatively, not with a number, but where the charge is found? And then finally, could you add the charges to it? I hope so, and I hope that was helpful.